Hello YouTube! Today we are going to talk about our first React hook in this series, the use state. As the name implies, the use state is used to keep local state inside our components, even between renders of that component. So how can that be useful? Let's say I have this create React application over here, and I will type an input field, and let's say that every time I type something in this input field, I want to pass that value into this counter component that I already created. And this counter component receives a description, which will be our input value, and it also has a default count that we will look into five minutes time. So the first question is, how can we grab the value from this input field? Well, we already saw in a previous video that we can have this onChange function, which we have an event, and we were doing something like this in the past, event.target.value, right? So now we need a way to keep this value inside our component. Over here, we are just printing it into the console. That's not what we want. So let's start to use our use state. We will do const equals to use state. And you can see that I left an array syntax over here. So what is this array syntax over there? Use state will return two values into an array. The first value of that array will be the current value of the state, and the second value will be a function to change that state. So in my case, I will call it description to the value. I will call it set description to the function to change that state. In your case, you can call it any name as long as you respect those two positions. The first for the value, the second for the function that changes that value. So I will use that description and I will pass it over here. Now, the first thing I need to do, you will see that TypeScript is complaining because by default, this use state, when we don't pass anything into it, it will be undefined. So we can just pass a default value of empty string, or we can put, for example, Bruno. So our counter component is already receiving Bruno. Now we need to change this console log from console log to our set description. And in order for React to control this component, this input field, we will just do value equals to description. So this is now what we call a controlled component in React. React is controlling the value. When it changes, React is keeping the state. So it's that flow of data, right? So you can see that the component already has Bruno and I have Bruno over there. I can start to type and I'm passing those values into the counter. We will look into forms a bit further in the series, but for now, what you need to understand is we are keeping that state inside our component already, right? And we are passing it into our counter. So let's start to go inside the counter component and start to play with this one. We need to have a button to reduce that initial value, which is 50 at the moment, and the button to increase. For example, every time I click, I go to 51, 52, 53. If I click on this one, I go to 49, 48, 47, something like that, right? So let's create two buttons, one button to reduce and one button to increase the value. So a minus and a plus, for example, right? Now we will do exactly the same thing. We will have const. Over here, I will call it, for example, count, set count equals to use state. And by default, we will use this default count that we are receiving, which will be 50 for now. I can just type count over here. And now you can see that I have 50 and I would like to be able to click minus and reduce that counter, click plus and increase. So you may already be thinking what we are going to do. It will be very similar to the on change on our input field. In this case, it will be an on click and we will have a function. And now in this function, we will use the set count like we did with the set description, set count. And this time we will use the count minus one. And for the plus, I can even copy all of these and just change the minus one to plus one. So plus one. If I save and indent this file, you can already see that I can click on minus and it goes to 49, 47, 43. I can click plus and it goes up. Now let's just go back to our app component 
and do something crazy over here. Let's say that we will do mat.floor and now mat.random random times 100, for example. So this value, every time that this component re-renders, it will be changed. And you will start to notice something very nice. Every time that I type something on Bruno, this component will re-render. You will see that I type T and now I have 89. I type everything I type, this value is changing. But you can see that my counter over here didn't change. So you can already notice that React after the first render, so it renders once, and after that moment, it completely ignores that value that you are passing. It really doesn't care. This value is, the, is just the initialization value. If you want to change the value after that moment, you need to, to use this set count function. So let's say that you have a really, really expensive function or very slow function like this. Uh, get a slow number, for example, right? For the moment, I will just say return five. But let's say that you had a really, really slow function over here. Now, if I come over here and I do console log and I say Bruno, for example, and I open my terminal, you will be able to see that every time that I type something, that function is being called, right? And if this function is very expensive, this is a waste of resources because React is not looking into it after the first render. So React provides us a way to pass a function over here and React will only call this function the first time. So you can see here Bruno and now every time I type, I don't receive it. If you are wondering why we have two Brunos is because the fact that in Create React App, we are using this react.strict mode. If you just delete that strict mode from there, you will see that basically now every time that we render, it will only type Bruno once. But leave the React strict mode there because it's important. We might even talk about it in the future, right? But at least now you understand that you can use this and that can save you some milliseconds down the line, or if it's a uh, very expensive, probably a bit more, right? Let's just put back our default component. And now I will show you something very important that you need to be aware. Let's say that someone in your team comes over here and just types something like this code that I will show you. They have a set count and now they come and they do, for example, okay, so I'm expecting that every time I click on minus, it will be minus three. But as you can see, that's not what's happening. We are clicking and we are only going down one time. So what's really happening over here? React, when it renders this component, right, will grab the use state. And let's say at this moment, the use state will be 58. So React will have the count as 58. So what's happening is that we have 58 here, 58 here, 58 here, 58 here, 58 here, and probably I forgot somewhere else, but you get the idea. So what's happening is that you are going to do set count of 58 minus one, which is 57. The next time it will be 57 and now 57 again. So these errors happen quite a lot, especially if you are declaring the function over here called increment and then someone calls the increment two times over there. So how can you solve those type of errors? Well, those type of errors are again quite easy to fix because React provides us another callback. A bit of what we did in the use state, but this time this callback also sends us the previous state value, okay? So in our case, the previous state value can call it previous counter, anything that makes sense to you. So if now I copy this three times, what we are doing is, let's say now it's 58 or 62 now. And when React calls this one, it will say 62. So we are doing 62 minus one in this line. The next line when React calls us, it will say, okay, the previous value is 61. So we will do 61 minus one. And for the second line, you can already assume what's going to happen. So when I click now, it will be 56, 53, 50, 47. And now it's working as you expect. This might also happen if you are doing asynchronous code. For example, if you have set timeout, 
right? Set timeout. And let's say that you have a set timeout of three seconds, for example. And now you do set um, count of count minus one, right? And let's say that I will refresh this page just to have a new value. So we have 48. I click here, nothing happens. And now when this one will run, it will go back to 47. And that's exactly the same reason once again. We can change the past. And in the past, when this component run was 48, so we have 48 over there, we click that button, we put that click in a queue, so it's here waiting, but the value was 48 minus one. Now, every time that we were clicking on this button, this component was re-rendering with 49, 50, 51, I think we went up to 56 or whatever we went. But when this set timeout that was waiting run, it was a 48 minus one. So when it set the value, it set the value as 47. So once again, to fix this one, we can do exactly the same thing we did before. We can come over here, say the previous value, and now we will do previous minus one. So even if I refresh now, I need to click minus first, I go up. Now when it finishes, it will just go one down. So I think now you have everything you need. You already understand how the re-renders work and how the re-renders work and understanding that we can change the past. The past is a snapshot in time that happened will be quite useful for you when you are using React hooks, not only for the use state, but also the next hook we will talk about the use effect. It will be very important that you understand this concept that your component renders and when it renders, it just is a snapshot in time. Nothing changes on that snapshot in time. If you want to change something, there is a new render of your component. When that new render happens is again a snapshot in time. If you want to increase from that on is another snapshot in time. So if something that was rendered here will run, like our set timeout or an HTTP call that was pending, it will run from those values, okay? And that's why React has these previous functions that they can uh, provide to you that you can use. We, in the future, we will also have a look into something called the use reducer that will make this type of code slightly nicer to read, especially if you have a lot of state in your component. We will have a look into the use reducer in two, three videos from now. So I hope you like this video. If you liked it, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, and I hope to see you in a few days. Bye-bye.